Hey, what's up guys? So, on this week's video we're going to be making something quite special. This is for a giveaway that my good friend Kez and Phil are doing. Um, so they're, if you don't know them, they're Spirit and the Bear on Instagram. Really lovely people, they're amazing, super helpful. And um, they're recently going to be hitting 5,000 sub followers on Instagram, so they're doing a giveaway for it. And they've decided to do a mini carpenter's toolbox thing. Um, so they've asked a few of us on Instagram that would like to join in to make something for it. And people are making mini mallets, mini gauges, uh, mini block planes, things like that. And I decided that I'm going to do a mini carpet and square. Um, this is my first venture into metal, which will be interesting, but I do have quite a good reference point for it because my dad's an engineer, so um, I'm sure he can help me whenever I get in trouble. So she sent us um, a nice little package full of um, different types of wood, so what we're going to do, we're going to see how we get on, see how what we come up with, and hopefully don't have to remake it multiple times. But mini version of that. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Let's see how we get on. Okay, so we've got some walnut, oak, maple, and a bit of praduke, and I've also got a nice bit of brass in here as well. I only wanted some thin accent strips from the paduke, so I split that in two, just to give it that little bit of colour. I tried to do this with the walnut as well, but I really don't know how to use the bandsaw properly and it drifted massively. So I did have a spare bit of walnut on hand. I also sliced up the maple and did a little dry fit. So I glued these up just with a little bit of original type bond. You can see the pattern that I'm going for coming together now. The pattern I came up with was actually really nice. Just those little thin bits of reduke make a lot of difference. Now I know what you're going to say, why aren't I clamping these square? Because I'm doing it at an angle, I needed to have the bulk of the material at that angle as well. And then you give a little bit of a tappy tap with the hammer to keep it set. Had a little bit of an issue getting the clamps off on this one. So I thought, let's give Paul at Jackman Works a technique a try. Worth a try, isn't it? You can see the slanted design pattern that I was going for with that bit of brass set up against it. I used the golden rectangle calculation on this one. So the stainless that I got was roughly 90 mils long. So that gave me a rough idea of how long the handle had to be to make it aesthetically pleasing. I whacked it through the jointer and the thicknesser and then trimmed off the excess that I didn't need in order to form my handle. I then used my Triton TSPST 450 in order to clean up the remainder of the edges so they were to the line. So you can see I'm trying to cut this with my Japanese pull saw and it worked fine but the slot was far too thin. The steel that I had was two to three mil thick so I needed to trim it down a lot more. I ended up using my Dremel cutting tool um, to, to gouge that out just that little bit more and then a Aldi rasp actually. Okay, okay, I know what you're gonna say now where's my cutting fluid but i didn't have any i was on a deadline and i needed to get it done and i didn't burn through the drill bit that much now for me this was the hardest bit you can see i'm using that one of these aldi rasps again just to try and gouge out the hole a little bit more i really struggled to actually make this square i don't know what i was doing wrong but the pins weren't fitting properly and i really struggled to keep it square once it was all locked together so it took me ages and i mean ages to get this done i had to extend one of the holes on the on the steel plate in order to give it a little bit of wiggle for when i epoxied it but in the end it was fine i debated to leave it there i wanted to add the brass to the side like i said i've never dealt with metal much before so I thought I wanted to test myself and I wanted to push my limits. So I wanted to add a little slither of brass to each side of it, like a normal carpenter square has. So again, I'm using my Dremel just to trim that out and give me the right, roughly the right size that I needed. Quite a few firsts with this project, first time working with metal, and now the first time that I'm using epoxy as well. Uh, you went for the Gorilla 5 minute epoxy, and it actually was surprisingly easy to use. 
I borrowed one of the wife's waxing lollipop stick things in order to apply it and uh, it worked actually really well. Surprising. A lot of wiggle but some of these little Audi clamps came in quite handy. I've never used them for anything because they haven't got a lot of clamping pressure but there was just about enough to hold this in place to keep it on while the epoxy hardened. I did leave it the full 24 hours though to it to harden. I didn't keep working after the five minutes. I wanted to give it time to properly cure. So I started off by trying to hand sand the brass down and yeah, that was a mistake. So I ended up cutting them off, which worked a lot better. I first tried to sand it off with the Dremel tool, but that didn't work in the end. So yeah, I cut it off. Easy, just cut that excess off with the cutting tool for the Dremel. And then a bit more hand sanding. I took it back over to the Triton belt sander just to square everything off. And it was getting really hot, so I did end up using these clamps. But it took the majority of it off that I needed and got it nice and flush with the rest of the wood. Cleaned it up really nicely in the end. Leaving the brass uncut actually hid some of the wonky lines that I left on the wood while trying to uh, file it down. So use that Dremel route a bit again just to cut down those edge walls in order to slide the stainless steel in. You can see here that I'm actually just using a spare bit of brass just to make sure I've hit the bottom depth so I'm not leaving any gaps at the bottom to keep it nice and square. And again, bit of that five minute epoxy with some brass pins to keep it all nice and solid. This should last a very long time with it like this. And with a little bit of practice and play here and there, I did manage to get it as square as I could possibly make it. Some of the pins did need just that little bit of gentle persuasion with my friend Mr. Hammer in order to get them seated to start off with. And again, everyone's favorite part of it, sanding. Lots of sanding. I just gave everything a quick once over. I had 80 grit, 120 grit, 180 grit, 240. I went all the way up just trying to get that brass really nice. In hindsight, I should have done this before I added the brass to the edge, but it was fine. I then used just the smallest bit of Osmo Poly-X oil on it. Only one coat, I didn't think it needed much more than that. So, there we go. That's what it turned out like. And quite impressed with that. Scale wise, it's pretty good. Um, tried to use the perfect rectangle equation the best I could and yeah, it seems to uh, have come out quite well. So from what started with a bunch of scraps, turned into something actually quite pretty and that I'm quite impressed with. So um, I went for the slanted pattern again because I think I'm quite addicted to doing that at the moment. Um, but with the brass on the side and then the stainless on as the actual guide. Um, I'm surprised it came out square. I really am. It was something that I was really worried about doing but I'm actually really happy with it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that one. Um, if you want to keep in touch with me then you've got my Instagram, my Facebook and everything in those comments down below. Uh, and as I said again I've got that Patreon page if you want to come and support me on there. But fun little project. Hopefully Spirit and Bear will be happy with it and whoever wins the 5k giveaway will be happy with it as well. But uh, that's me signing off. Okay and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. If you want more from me you've got some videos over here uh, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, Facebook and everything, everything's in the description. And I'll leave the links to everyone else's YouTube channel that participated in this in the description as well. See you later.